Well, what we've got here is another install. This one using an atmospheric Columbia boiler. The reasons why I chose this boiler is the controls are on this side and they're accessible. That's the quarter turn boiler drain. We usually throw away the awful Chinesium boiler drain that comes with most practically all boilers. Now we were here a couple of years ago and installed a cyclass blowdown valve so when the old boiler failed we took it off that one and put it on this one. The boiler is firing now. Generating a little bit of pressure. And the pressure troll is set to the lowest setting. Now this boiler has a side outlet and so you add a T and a uh, cap or plug here to do the skim tapping. I've got it hot wired. Gas is hooked up. There's the um, equalizer line uh, return and that is the Harford loop. I've got a stainless steel street L there, a brass nipple, and a ball valve, and it ties into the existing uh, wet return. That wet return is copper and was installed by others long ago. Um, I've got a uh, boiler drain on there and or they're going to really put this to use. You need a wet vac to suck the water out. Uh, the water is definitely too thick to drink and too thin to plow. So that's where the water feeds in. I've got it temporarily wired up. This VXT is from uh, 2005 and it's uh, gonna put that to use or bypass Rob put it in so this side here we're just basically we've closed off uh, the drain plugs and so forth and the uh, and the drip there Got it up on blocks. Got our rosin paper down. Uh, in this case, it's not to protect the floor from us, but to protect us from the floor. That's the drip for the uh, backflow preventer. And there's your shut off. Now, what we've done is our usual work in oversizing the header that we could. This could be two inch, but we usually oversize it uh, to make drier steam. And there's a two inch tied into the original line. Now, so was it about ten years ago? Now we re we replaced this line and got it to stop banging. That's why the customer called us when the boiler went went south. And that's where we're going to tie in uh, the electric probably tomorrow. So there's our install. Nice thing about it, it's got a lot of good swing joints here. So as this thing expands and contracts, it won't put any stress on the boiler. I think we'll we got, still got to do some cleaning on this guy. Uh, 
And we're going to test the low water cutoff now. We'll start draining it. Look for that amber light to come on. I'm getting pretty low. In fact, that's lower than I would like. It says the lowest permissible level there. And ah, there we go. I'd Still, the probe on this one is actually located here. And so we're well below the probe, and that thing is still flickering, so we probably got a little bit of cleaning to do. Either that or this low water cutoff is. It's still coming on and off. Eventually it has to stay off for about 30 seconds for this thing to shut. So it should be shutting off any time. Yep, there it goes. And now it should be sending a signal to the VXT. There's our period there. And about 30 seconds, it should uh, refill. I've got it set to turn on, and uh, and at 30 second delay, it should then feed what it thinks is one gallon. There it goes. It should stay on for approximately one minute. Doesn't take all that much water to drain out for this thing to trigger. Coming up nice and slow. And the amber light should go out any minute. There we go. But it's still going to continue to feed. Once you, once, if you set it to trigger after a 30 second delay and feed one gallon, it will feed one gallon. You see your timestamp there. When it, and it should bring us up to about mid gauge. Yep. And it should start to fire. Damper coming into position. And you'll hear the spark. And she's the firing. So that looks pretty good. We're ready to give these people back their house, and uh, we'll be here tomorrow wiring and firing.